Monday morning and welcome again to the daily video blog we've been doing now for, oh, I think it's probably about seven weeks now. It's just amazing how time flies in lockdown. Uh, we've been doing this as a daily update to you in terms of some of the key messages we want you to be aware of. Uh, but we've also used it as an opportunity to bring in some guest speakers to give you an example of some of the work that's going on um, around helping people cope with lockdown across a whole variety of different uh, uh, services and activities. So we have today uh, another guest speaker. Uh, we have Jay, who's come in from uh, the service that helps us with people with learning disabilities and autism uh, called Talkback. And I'm going to hand over to Jay in a minute. But before I do that, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about our waste collection services. Uh, I touched on this on Friday, but as things are now firming up, uh, it's now definite um, that we will be recommencing our green waste collections and indeed bulky waste collections from the 11th of May. That's next Monday. Uh, so those services will recommence. Uh, as I said last Friday, uh, you will be collected on the same day as usual, but the time may vary from what you've been used to historically. So please check on our website. That's the Buckinghamshire Council website, not your old district council website, the Buckinghamshire Council website, and check what time it is likely that your waste uh, will be collected. Uh, we're advising everybody to put out their green waste um, around uh, 6.30 in the morning, um, so that you can guarantee that the bins will be out um, if uh, you have an early collection round uh, in your particular area. Uh, and with bulky waste, uh, that will follow the normal pattern in your area. Uh, that's normally a booking system uh, so that things like, you know, settees and mattresses and stuff like that can be collected. Uh, but normally you'll have to book that. So again, please refer to your website um, for details uh, about how you book those bulky collections. The other thing I wanted to mention, which is obviously uh, hot in my email inbox, is the reopening of some of our household waste sites, um, what are called household waste recycling centres or just household recycling centres. There's been a lot of demand for that. Uh, clearly, the reason we closed them um, is predominantly for two key reasons, one of which was that it was very difficult, certainly in the early days of lockdown, to have enough social distancing on some of the sites. We saw lots of people uh, crowding into these sites, uh, cheek by jowl with each other, this was clearly against the government guidelines. Um, so we had problems, particularly on some of our smaller sites with social distancing. Uh, and we also had the situation that in the early days, again, uh, government advice in terms of the requirement to travel was very restricted. So travel to a waste site was not regarded by the police as being essential travel. So there was the risk of someone being stopped, uh, fined and turned around. Uh, and we didn't want to put either residents or businesses in that sort of position. So we've taken a long time to clarify that position with the police. Candidly, it's been a bit of a struggle over the last two weeks to get real clarity on that because of the ambiguity from central government. Uh, we believe we've now got that. Uh, so we're planning to reopen five of our sites from Wednesday. Uh, those sites are Beaconsfield, uh, Amersham, Aston Clinton, High Heavens, which is a Wickham site just out to the west of Wickham, uh, and Buckingham in the north. So we've got a geographic spread of them, but they are predominantly, with the exception of Buckingham, our bigger sites where we can actually institute good social uh, isolation um, so people can be uh, uh, well away from other people actually uh, throwing rubbish at the same time. There will be limited access to the site, so people will only be allowed in in small numbers. So if you are going to go along, you should expect a significant wait to get in, certainly in the early days. Uh, and you will be required to have proof of residence so that you are a Buckinghamshire resident, uh, because obviously there is the danger that what we get is people pouring over the border from uh, other counties which are not yet opening their waste sites. And that means that Buckinghamshire residents could end up at the back of the queue effectively. So we will be looking for residents to bring proof of identity, so proof of residence, um, and we will be putting more information about that on our website. It's really important you don't join the queue and then discover after an hour or so waiting, you get to the front of the queue uh, and you get turned away because you don't have proof of residence. So more information about that on our website. Uh, and as I get more information from the team, I'll also update you hopefully on tomorrow's uh, video blog as well. So having said that, I'm going to pass over now to Jay, who's going to talk more about TalkBack and the way they've been looking at innovative approaches mm. to working, obviously, uh, during lockdown as well. So, Jay, tell us a bit more about uh, what TalkBack does. Thank you, Martin. And uh, as someone who lives within about 100 yards of high heavens, I'm looking forward to it being reopened again. Um, thank you. 
to the council, first of all, we, we, we work with a lot of council teams and my thanks goes to them, particularly adult social care, the education teams, and all the various children's and adult commissioners and teams who are really doing a lot for people with learning disabilities and autism, especially in these really tough times. And we've seen some really, really positive work for them. And I just think I'd like to acknowledge that as someone who sometimes gives the council a hard time the other way. And at Talkback, we're a charity that I'm proud to run. And we've been working in Bucks and the home counties for 21 years now. And our simple focus is to enable everybody with a learning disability and autism to lead the fulfilling lives that they want and actively contribute to their local com community. It's not just about having a day, it's about having an aim, it's about being embraced. And one of the things we've learned in the last seven or eight weeks, same as everybody else is learning, is how can we work in new ways? And we've all been challenged and we've learned a lot from people with learning disability and autism in new ways of working, which I think applies to us all in various forms and actually will take forward from this. For, for myself, my first three immediate positives have been my petrol costs have gone from £50 a week to £20 a month, which has been fantastic. I hear the birds singing every day as I work, but apart from the noise of the traffic has gone because even around this area, it's, it's beautiful. And people say hello to me when I'm walking. And that's really positive. And I hope that we do learn a lot from this period of time. And there's a period of realization that we take forward. And in our work, we've had to change. We work with over 200 people a week. And we're working at colleges, at Bucks College Group and BCA. We work in the community. We run sessions. And we have people coming to us from all over the county. And we work in Reading. We work in Bucks. We work in Aylesbury. Wickham, Milton Keynes, and suddenly all these people have been diversely put into their homes and are back in a place where they very vulnerable people sometimes with their health conditions and they can't get to us. And so our first thing was, well, we could do this, we could do that. What are we going to do and how are we going to learn to work in new ways? And I think people like Ben at the council has learned about virtual technology. He's learning to, to take the whole council forward in how do we work virtually? And from that, we've had to think about how do we do that? So in colleges, we're working with Bucks College Group and BCA one-to-one -one with people, supporting tutors, working alongside people, and actually taking people through community living, working with people with autism who have taken the whole process of COVID-19, sometimes quite literally, and have locked themselves in their room. So how do you access someone like that? Well, you can access them via technology. You can access them via phone call. And instead of group sessions, when you bring people together, we've had to think about these people are now in home. So how do we do that? So we've just done very simple, very effective online sessions three times a day. We do art, we do dance and wake up, we do yoga, we do disco dancing, we do talent shows, we're doing mindfulness, we're doing yoga. And we're actually reaching out to people in totally new ways. And instead of just saying, well, these people have to be members of our place, we've actually said, actually, we're going to stream into the homes where people aren't our members. You can just come along, join our sessions. We don't need any money. We're doing it anyway. Please just come and join us because virtual technology means you can have up to 28 people on a session all of a sudden. And as we go forward, we have to learn from this because we possibly can't gather 28 people again in the same room for a period of time because of social distancing. We're going to have to think this out. And we also find the really funny thing has been that we start working with people who find it incredibly difficult sometimes with learning disabilities to concentrate at all. And suddenly we find working with them virtually means they actually think it's a one to one session. So instead of actually having a three to five minute concentration span, we've got now people who are concentrating for 40, 50 minutes quite happily in a session because they see it as one to one. They're not disturbed by anybody else in the group. And so we've recognised for ourselves, we should never assume and we should constantly look for better ways of engaging with each other. And the other thing that's been great is we've seen new talents emerge because of this lockdown, because of this situation. We've said to people, let's look for new skills and ideas in our talent contests. And suddenly we've got a young man with autism who's writing songs. And then he went from writing songs to performing the songs. And now it's become a thing if we ask him to write songs for us. And suddenly we found a new talent and new skills. And see, there are challenges around technology. The camera suddenly doesn't work or the internet crashes or something else. 
there are people who don't like going online, but it can be overcome by patience. And what you learn, the same as you learn with some people who say technology can't, or oh, I can't use that. We sometimes get someone who might stay for a session for two minutes. And then the next time we put them online, they stay for five minutes and then they stay for 10 minutes. And what you learn is patience to gradually get there. That's something we've been doing for a long period of time. And the other thing that we've learned is that people love being contacted. So we contact over 200 people a week and their parents by phone to ensure they know we're there, to ensure they know we're supported. We also know adult social care are doing this as well. And just a message for them and us, the thing we get from the parents is we never feel alone because we're getting calls from various people. So thank you for anybody making calls to people. And they are, these people, the parents are sometimes very isolated away from this, but they're adapting and changing. And so there's four lessons we've learned from people with learning disabilities and autism. And there's always learning we get our way. Lesson one is adapt and support and don't think you can't get a result. Lesson two is people really appreciate a phone call. Never feel alone. Make sure someone doesn't feel alone. Think today, who could you ring who might be just really nice to see or really too nice to talk to? And we learn a lot about people by the changing the circumstances is the environment. And we never assume. And therefore, we also look at how do we learn new talents and new skills. And my final comment comes from a real piece of learning for myself. Being a CEO, and we're meant to be all knowledgeable and all wise and everything else. And that's something I've been a long way from for a long period of time. But five weeks ago, none of my staff had a clue about virtual working. Now I have a brilliant team who are very focused on caring for the person. And we gave them this challenge and they've invented, they've created, they're doing amazing online sessions. If you come to our disco dancing session, you'll just be amazed at the 70s music and seeing John Travolta come live again. You'll see people who learn disabilities taking on fantastic moves. That old thing that we all used to do in the discos, they can do it just as well as us. I've seen staff reaching out, making hundreds of calls. And when you let your staff face a major challenge and give them the problem, they come up with amazing solutions that you can't even believe. I want to thank them because they've done great. And I thank other staff from other organisations as well who are doing amazing things. So never underestimate the people, ability of the people around you. And that's been a lesson for me this time. Our manifesto, as we sort of come to a close, is there are so many good things to learn from this time. It has been hard. It's not easy, especially if you're a person with learning disability and you can't get out at all because of your vulnerability of health, which is half of the, one of the associated things. And we have a manifesto at Talkback and I'd like to finish with it. And the manifesto is this. It's written by people with learning disability and autism. And this is all they ask. And this is something we can think about because there's a lot to learn for each of us. They just this. This is the Talkback manifesto. See us as people who are valued just like everybody else. See us as people who enjoy the same things as everybody else, sports, drama, shopping, and having fun. See us as people who don't deserve labels or stigma or discrimination. See us as people who can make our own decisions and have a right to be heard. See us as people who want to have relationships and love. See us as people who have skills and abilities to positively change things around us. See us as people who want all the opportunities that life can bring. See us as people who have so much to offer. See us as people. Martin, thank you for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity just to talk for a little bit about the change that we're learning about, new ways of working that we hopefully can all take forward for the future. Thank you to the council and thank you to yourself. Thanks ever so much, Jay. And uh, I have to say some incredibly uh, profound and wise words there. I mean, a lot of us get so wrapped up in our everyday lives worrying about green waste collections or what happens to a cardboard box or whatever outside our houses. But actually, there's a whole cohort of our fellow residents um, who, who have other challenges, quite frankly. And it's organisations like your own that actually help those people cope in new ways with the challenges they've got. And God bless you for what you do, quite frankly, on behalf of, of, of a large number of our residents. So thank you for that. Uh, just before I sign off, I just want to say um, there is some, uh, some news on the 
business grants front. Um, I've been reporting regularly on the grants that we've been making um, to local businesses under the current government scheme that's out there. Uh, we've already given out something like 67 million pounds to local businesses. Um, there's talk about some more money, potentially discretionary money, but as yet we have no clarity on that whatsoever. Uh, so if anybody's picking up that, that up, please don't start writing in yet. We have no clarity on how much or what guidelines are or anything like that. Um, as and when we have more information, uh, we will put, be putting it obviously on our own website. We'll be putting it out through BBF uh, and I'll try and update also via this daily video blog as well. So as and when we know more, we'll tell you straight away. Having said that, uh, I'm going to sign off now. And as always, I'm just going to say, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you tomorrow.